watch this. I didn't know how to make any of this stuff before four weeks ago. Today in Across the Fence, we'll learn about a 4-H program that's putting a new spin on how to teach inside and outside the classroom. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. Education is an evolving process. Administrators, principals, and teachers are always trying new approaches to engage students. In Vermont, students are encouraged to set goals through personalized learning plans. The plans allow students to follow their passion wherever it leads, especially if it takes them outside the classroom. But teachers can't do it all, and that's where 4-H can help. 4-H spin clubs are after-school activities catering to special interests. Students at Faiston Elementary School wanted to know how to cook. What they learned went beyond the classroom or the kitchen. Here's Across the Fences, Keith Silva. The kitchen is cooking at the Tucker Hill Inn in Wheatsfield. Me and James are cooking soup, salad, and noodles. Ellie is cooking the main course, and Delaney and Caroline are cooking the dessert. These based in elementary school students are learning how to cook French cuisine. From coca van to profiteroles, it's an experience that's also an education. I really did not know that we were going to do this. I wanted to um, just learn more about the experience, about like what it takes to cook for a meal for our school. I didn't know how to make any of this stuff before four weeks ago. I really like cooking because it's the process that you go through. My favorite part is probably having the thrill of trying something new. I thought it would be a in very interesting experience to actually go in the kitchen, kitchen and see what they take to make the pasta, make the chicken. Yeah. This five-week after-school project is a collaboration between Faced and Elementary School, the Tucker Hill Inn, and UVM Extension 4-H. It's part of 4-H's SPIN, or Special Interest Curriculum. Allison Smith is the 4-H educator for Washington and Orange Counties. The core of 4-H is providing youth with positive youth development that's hands-on learning. We try to instill belonging, independence, mastery, uh, generosity in their projects. And so you can really take any project, any interest that a student has, and you can apply the 4-H model in that way. And I think that there are lots of people in our communities who want to share with youth. I think they're waiting for an invitation. And 4-H really has the infrastructure to take that invitation to the community and then make the connection. And that's really what I'm here for and the role I play is to you know, tie all those logistics together so that the chefs in the kitchen can have fun with the kids, the kids can have fun learning how to cook, and I'm the one just making sure it all goes smoothly. <laughs> Do your parents know you're cooking the chicken? Teaching Ellie the proper way to brown chicken reminds Chef Kevin Beacon of when he was first learning to cook. I started cooking at a summer camp when I was 14 years old. I can't imagine being 11, 10, 12 years old, these 5th and 6th graders, and coming into a kitchen like this. To me, it would be a little bit daunting for sure. Uh, but the excitement we saw in their faces, especially the first week, um, was pretty special. And it kind of sp spurred us to keep going, to say, yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. Look at the excitement in these kids' faces. Getting students out of the classroom and into the community is the goal of Act 77. Passed in 2013, the legislation adds options, what are called flexible pathways to a student's education. The goal is to provide students with experiences that build life skills, what educators refer to as transferable skills. Gene Berthium is the principal of Faiston Elementary think, School. You know, I, I never look at schooling as just what happens within the walls of a school or the four walls of a classroom. It's really about uh, kids having authentic, uh, real life experiences um, that they can reflect on. They can assess who they are relative to those experiences. What it affords us is uh, building inroads to um, partnerships within our community, um, supporting us with uh, other folks that can help and support student learning and, uh, and kids following their passion and their interests. Berthew believes 4-H is a resource more Vermont educators should look at when trying to find experiences that build transferable skills for students. Schools should be looking at 4-H to really supporting uh, flexible pathways for kids, the personal learning experiences that we're seeking for, for students today, um, because so much of what 
we're teaching isn't just the subjects, it's the nuance of those subjects, it's the bridging of those subject areas, and these 4-H experiences uh, do that for kids. When James is in the kitchen, he knows he's doing more than just peeling eggs. He's learning by doing. I think of it as more of life training kind of thing. I like hearing it said to me and then working on it. I don't like book learning because there's, you're sitting there, you're going to read this, and then you have to, like, you put the book away. Learning hands-on, I think, is a lot better than, like, re reading it from a book. May and Ellie also like the hands-on approach to learning. Like, if you're cooking, then if you make a mistake, then it's like, I know exactly what I did wrong, that's a mistake, here let me fix it and do something different. Then in a book, you're just rereading a sentence. It's different because in here we get to have more fun and we get to like actually w like work on fun stuff. Like we get to cook and we get to like help plan the meal. And then in school, we sit there with a book or a pencil and just do work all day. Knives and spoons may have taken the place of pencil and paper, but there's still a test at the end. After four weeks, the students are expected to prepare a meal for 30 guests. The proceeds from the dinner go to the sixth grade trip to Montreal. So we need 56. Cooking for their friends and families is another aspect of this project that's helped the students realize there's more to running a restaurant than making a meal. I learned that it takes at least two days to get ready for the restaurant to like open up and get stuff done. And that's why I know like why it's not open maybe in the morning, it's open at night because I need to get their stuff prepared. And also I like you need to do a lot of math to figure out for one night like we can fit uh, 50 people in here. How many do you think want mac and cheese? Like that. I didn't know that like you had to make stuff like perfect and if it wasn't like plated the right way, if it wasn't cooked the right way, it wouldn't taste the same, it wouldn't be the same, and everything has to be perfect. Self-discipline and working efficiently are abilities these students will need as they continue to learn. They now have a number of skills. I think mom and dad would love them to come home and cook dinner because they've learned some really incredible skills um, in the kitchen. But, you know, there's things like time management, decision making. There were times where we wanted to do more, but we had to make decisions based on how many learning sessions we had. This definitely goes way beyond the classroom and hopefully there are lessons here that will carry on throughout their lives. All the food for this project was donated by the Tucker Hill Inn. For Began, it's a small price to pay for the experience. If I were in sixth grade and somebody did this for me, I think I'd probably remember that the rest of my life. And I'm hoping these kids do the same. I'm hoping that they see that there's a, there's a position, portion of this that's about follow through. It's about commitment. It's about accountability. I think they're, get, they're getting all of this, not just in school, but now they're getting it here too. So. To be part of the community like this, it's pretty special. For the students, the chefs, and the community, this has been an experience that's cooked to perfection. In Waitsfield, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence. Well, thanks, Keith. After all that prep work, it will come as no surprise that the dinner was a rousing success. The students ended up cooking for 32 guests, and they certainly earned those chef hats. I'm joined now by Sarah Kleinman. Sarah is the Vermont 4-H Program Director. Welcome back to Across the Fence. Thank you. Good to be here. Yeah, what are some of the other examples of 4-H spin clubs that are going on in Vermont? Sure, we have a handful. Uh, we had an art-based one in collaboration with Studio Place Arts over, I think it was winter vacation in Barrie. Uh, there's been a poultry and sewing spin program up in Franklin County and I believe there's a sewing one that's happening right now in North Bennington mm -hmm. as well. Do participants need to be 4-H members to participate? No, not at all. That's actually the beauty of our spin club program is that we are looking to adapt our traditional 4-H program with um, maybe a little more modern, sometimes more relevant programming uh, that's open to anybody. There's short-term opportunities. Um, oftentimes they're actually not agriculturally based, which is what a lot of our traditional club uh, youth do. They're interested in coming to us. So the spin programs um, are open to anybody, all ages, although at times the program may be um, Subjected to just a certain age group. But um, yeah, there's short term opportunities and communities for all children. And so, with the emphasis on personalized learning and flexible pathways in schools, what kinds of opportunities does this create for 4 H? 
It augments or supplements what's happening in the classroom. Um, in this example that we just saw, it was the school really and the students who are interested in learning and so we helped take that interest and connect it to community opportunities. Um, with the personalized learning plans, each student chooses a goal. They have opportunity, um, though of course every school is at a little bit different level of readiness in terms of its implementation. But the students can identify the areas in which they're interested uh, and find opportunities in the community um, that would serve those needs as long as they're learning certain skills and gaining certain proficiencies. There was a student in this particular clip that talked about math and how much math she was learning. Right. And of course she can take that learning, um, apply it to the proficiencies that they have to meet in the schools uh, and, and hopefully use that experience so she gains credit for it. So there's a lot of opportunity out there and, and a lot of skills that are being developed. We talked about the students, but what about the schools themselves? I mean to be able to partner with a 4-H program that's already established must be a pretty big deal. Absolutely. And I think in communities too uh, where there aren't there isn't a whole lot of infrastructure or many businesses especially in some of our more rural areas in Vermont um, we we exist we can provide those opportunities we can help um, put the shell around the youth development component so if there is a business or any individuals who have particular skills that um, want to help and provide opportunities so that the students uh, can continue their learning in a more hands-on manner we can help make that happen and and that's what we're here to do. Talk a little bit about the hands-on because that is a huge component of what especially these kids were doing. Abs sure. Um, neuroscience tells us, and this is a very simplified version of it, that if um, you do something and it triggers an emotion, hopefully a good emotion, um, you then trigger a memory and the memory means learning. So that's um, really the hallmark of our 4-H program is this hands-on approach that we've had for years and years and why students come out of it with um, such great experiences and, and really remembering um, the opportunities that they have. So the spin clubs um, are all about hands-on learning. It gets them out of a classroom. They, um, it's tr trial by doing, uh, learn how to cook, learn how to sew, learn uh, that we've had conversation about a working steer club that will then make yokes for the animals. Um, so it's, it's getting that hands-on experience. It triggers those emotions. You remember what you're doing and you gain skills, um, whether it's life skills or the content skills. It was interesting, a young woman in, in that clip that we just saw, talked about making mistakes. And you do make mistakes. What you do is you learn from them. Right. Yep, absolutely. Um, the whole learning by doing approach isn't necessarily, uh, it's not focused on the outcome per se, but it's about learning, right, learning from your mistakes, being able to apply what you've done and take it to different settings. So these students who have just learned to cook um, can then go and, and measure um, if they want to sew. They know how to measure and they know uh, fractions and, and things like that. So they can take, and that's part of our debriefing in the program, is where can you take these experiences and apply else in your life. How does 4-H measure the success of these SPIN projects? Oh, well, um, we look at the skills that are learned. We look at the final projects. That's mm -hmm. a huge part of it, is being able to communicate what you've done, um, have parents and community members see the final projects for the youth, um, and, and the numbers that we've reached. So we, we know that um, from the beginning, they've gone, the youth have gone through stages and have been able to come out of it with some sort of final project and communicate um, where their learning has taken place. And this project with the Facedown Elementary School in the Tucker Hill Inn obviously doesn't happen without someone stepping up to volunteer. Uh, that's a big component. It's huge. Um, and that's um, one of the challenges we face today in our traditional club program is finding community members and volunteers who have enough time to give um, of themselves for an ongoing commitment. And so these spin programs are these short-term opportunities where somebody may be able to, you know, say, I've got, I've got six hours and, you know, an hour every Tuesday for six sessions. Uh, so it's easier for volunteers um, or business owners or uh, parents to help share what they're, in uh, share the skill that they're interested in and give to 4-H and give to the community but um, not overwhelm them. Mm -hmm. And so as a statewide 4-H director would you like to see more schools taking part in these spin programs? Absolutely. Um, we've yeah. been working on that all across the state uh, so sure um, we can help to identify we can go to schools and help them figure out what it is that their students might be interested in learning and then go out into the communities and try to find those members. Um, if somebody identifies themselves to us or businesses say yes we'd be happy to help out we can help we can make that happen and figure out exactly what that means. Okay, for more information about 4-H programs in Vermont, you can check out the 4-H website. That's listed on your screen. It's uvm.edu slash extension slash youth. Or you can call the State 4-H office toll-free at 1-800-571-0668. That's 800 
five seven one zero six six eight. And again, you know, it it can be almost anything. Sure, um, it could be sailing. It could be it could be more cooking um, technology. Absolutely. Uh, what we want to do is expose these youth to different careers and different skills out in the communities that they may not normally think about. Sarah, thank you so much. Thanks so much. That's our program for today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. Thank you.